Hi there. Well, welcome to the Bears Gym. We are going to have a little Bible study today in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 21. And I have a really heavily breathing dog in the background. It's kind of a dog, bear, you know, kind of thing. And, uh, but it's okay. It's safe. He's good. I'm good. You're good. And we're ready to rock in some Bible study here. So here we go. Acts 21. And it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and had launched, we came with a straight course unto Coas. Kind of interesting. I think I've mentioned before. All these little places in Greek and Macedonia and Turkey. If I had my brothers of a place to go visit for a holiday, you know, kind of cruise on a on an old slow moving ship that had steaks in the galley for cooking and a good gym for working out. I think I'd I'd kind of like to uh, float around in the Aegean and uh, visit Greece, uh, all the islands, Turkey, Macedonia, um, that little area in there. I, th I think it would be fantastic and trample through some of the grounds that uh, Paul and the apostles uh, trampled upon in their uh, preaching of the gospel and see where some of the churches were in that region. That would be very, very interesting to me. Anyway, and the day following unto Rhodes and from thence unto Patara and finding a ship sailing over into Phoenicia, we went aboard and set forth. Now when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand and sailed into Syria and landed at Tyre for there the ship was to unlaid her burden. At Tyre, they're going to run into a few disciples. And uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, no matter where you're at uh, in the world, in our country, in your country, you know, once you start talking to people, it's amazing where you find other believers in Jesus Christ. It's, it's just amazing. And it's kind of like, You've been always friends. You, know, you start telling each other about your families and your good times and your bad times and your failures and, and all that kind of stuff and it's because it's the Holy Spirit. And uh, Paul found some believers in Tyre, and uh, they, got, they got tight. They got close. Verse 4, And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. Now, that's kind of conflicting um, because that's where Paul wanted to go. And he wanted to go there and preach the gospel to Jews and Gentiles. But he, he really wanted to see the Word of God penetrate um, Judaism and the Israeli people. Uh, he wanted it to, to sink in and there'd be a, 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 a revival. But unfortunately, it was not to be. And when he and we had accomplished the days of visiting of the people of Tyre, we departed and went our way. And they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city. And we kneeled down on the shore and prayed and when he, we had taken our leave of one another, we took ship, and they returned home again. And when we had finished our course from Tyre, we came to Ptolemyus and saluted the brethren and abode with them a day. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. The same man had four daughters virgins, which did prophesy. Now that's, as, as a Christian man that has daughters, that hey, that's all our hopes, that our young daughters are going to stay clean and chaste, you know, with their white dresses on, and uh, being devoted to the Lord, you know, giving Bible studies and seeking the Lord for, for word of exhortation and so forth in the body of Christ. That's all of us Christian men are... are, are our, our hope, that not only our daughters, but our, our sons, you know, our children. 
our descendants, our, our arrows and our quivers would go forth as we let them arrows go and take the word of God out into the world. That's our hope as godly men and women of our children, that they would be arrows for the Lord going off into the world to preach the name of Jesus Christ. So he had four daughters that were prophets. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews that are in Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now, those of us that have read the New Testament know that this did happen. And, and it's kind of like if you go into, you know, down into bad neighborhoods or out into even worse neighborhoods, preaching the gospel, you know, go street witnessing or taking the gospel to a, a, to an, uh, uh, a heavily uh, hostile environment and preaching the word of God, people get concerned, say, hey, something's going to happen to you there. But you know what? We want to go there and preach the word of God, so we do it. And that's what Paul wants. You know, everybody is concerned, and, and they're saying this is what's going to happen. And, you know, there's two sides of the coin that Paul should have listened. The other point is they're preaching right. This is what's going to happen, but the Lord has already kind of shown him that he's going to go there and preach the gospel. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when we would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. And after those days, we took up our carriages and went up to Jerusalem. And there went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea, and brought with them one Manasseh of Cyprus, an old disciple with whom we should lodge. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought amongst the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Now, that was kind of a lie. It was actually a full-on lie because he wasn't going there to teach them to abhor all of the law, but to preach to them the fulfillment of the law, and that was Jesus Christ. What is it, therefore, the multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them. Take them and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they might shave their heads, and all may know that these things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. As you will see here coming up, this is uh, kind of a thing of let's let's show everybody we're you know uh, you know uh, we're 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 preaching, so we got to wear you know, a collar backwards and, you know, a robe and, you know, have our heads shaved. and um, But it didn't work too good. Because if you desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, you will be persecuted. So Paul, he listened to them and he did all this rigmarole, but it, it, it didn't do anything. It didn't help. It didn't convince anybody. It just, they just continued to hate him. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing save only that they should keep themselves 
from things offered to idols, from blood, from what was strangled, and from fornication. Then Paul took the men, and the next day purified himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification, until then offering should be offered for every one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people, and they laid hands on him. So there's going to be a little mini riot here, once again. In crying out, men of Israel, help, this is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law that this place, and further, he has brought Greeks into the temple and polluted the holy place, which, once again, that was a lie, a false accusation. If you, once again, if you desire to live in Christ and follow in his name, people are going to falsely accuse you. And there's nothing you can do about it. They falsely accuse Jesus. And Jesus said, if they treated me as such, they're going to treat you as such also. So you just got to get used to it. For if they had been before with him in the city, Trophimus and Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple, which he, he had not. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band, that all Jerusalem was in an uproar, who immediately took soldiers and centurions, and ran down unto them, and when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul." So they had a good police force, and uh, you know, even though they didn't have squad cars and, and rifles and shotguns, you know, they, they, they got on their horses and they moved fast to the problem area, and they intervened and uh, praised the Lord for our centurions of this modern age. You know, they have it rough. They have to deal with a rough, you know, the roughest in the uh, the the criminal mind. Um, the indigent, um, the, the wicked, they have it rough, you know, and their hands are tied somewhat by the law. And, and uh, you know, if, uh, if, if uh, things go sour, you know, they, they always they take the blame. And so uh, God be with them. They, they, they have kind of a rough job. Uh, they got to be cops and crack down on the evil in this world. And they also have to be somewhat politicians, unfortunately, in the, this age in which we live. Anyway, God bless them, and uh, God bless these guys. They, they did their jobs the best they could. Verse 33. Then the chief captain came near, took him, and commanded him to be bound with two chains, and demanded who he was and what he had done. Some cried one thing, some another. And among the multitude, when he could not know the certainty for the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle or the fortress. And when he came upon the stairs, so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of the, peop multitude of the people followed after crying, Away with him, or kill him. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee, who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou the Egyptian, which before these days made us an uproar, and led us out into the wilderness? 4,000 men that were murderers. But Paul said, no. I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city of Cilicia, a citizen of by no means a small city. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with his hand unto the people. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, now we're going to move right into Acts 22 here because it's just, Acts 22 is like right after the comma or the semicolon. It's like, okay, I'm about to say something, er, chapter break. So we're going to continue right on in Acts 22. Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye the defense which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept them more silence, and he saith, I am verily a man, which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous towards God, 
as ye all are this day. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. As also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them, which were there, bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. If you remember, Paul used to be on the side of the religious Jews that hated Christianity, they hated Christians, they hated Jesus. Paul used to be on their side until he saw the light, if you remember, when Jesus appeared to him on the road. And then he had a Christophany, a Christ appearance, a change, a born-again experience with Jesus Christ. Anyway, he's giving his discourse here, verse 6. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And that was the Lord Jesus speaking to him. And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? He said unto me, I am Jesus, the Nazarene, whom thou persecutest. I don't know about you, but uh, sometimes I wish that Jesus would have just spoke to me, you know, audibly, you know, when I was a young and foolish child. So that would have saved me a lot of grief in my life. But I had to run my course like everybody else. And I look back and I say, you know, I had to get my feet dirty a little bit so I realize the sinful condition of a man's heart that needs salvation. And that was me. I was raised in a church. I heard a lot of, you know, various things. And I had enough where I could say, I, I want Jesus. But it just never really happened, you know, until I was about 15. And being at a Christian concert, you know, a Christian rock concert, uh, the Lord just spoke to me, and I, and I responded. It was at that time I responded. Now, that didn't make my life perfect. I had a lot of ups and downs, some huge ups and downs. But I've always realized my sinfulness and my need that sin is there. I'm clean. My, my life's been clean, you know, for, for over a quarter of a century. That don't make me special. It just means... I'm grateful for what God has done to me and for me and that I can turn around and share that love and that forgiveness with you out there. Okay, I kind of got off track here. Now I'm back to the, back to the text here. Anyway, Jesus did speak to Paul that way. And they that were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spoke to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all the things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of that light being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And when Ananias, Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report, of all the Jews which dealt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him, and he said, The God of our fathers has chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that the just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. Like I say, that was quite a privilege. Not everybody has that privilege, but he also suffered greatly more than most of us have. I'm speaking of Paul the Apostle. He went through a lot of hardship for that name, for that privilege to be spoken to by the Lord. For thou shalt be his witness unto all the men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now, why tarriest thou, arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. And saw him saying unto me, Make haste, and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I have imprisoned and beaten every synagogue them that believeth on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I was also standing by and consenting unto his death, and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart, 
for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Now the crowd, after they heard this, they, 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 they were lit up like, like a match, like a match on a, like a fresh pile of kindling that has been doused with oil. They, they exploded into yet another mini riot. They gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes, they threw dust into the air. I think that's like the epitome of anger and, and a, a mob mentality of grabbing dust and dirt and rocks and throwing them in the air and at your accused, your accuser, the person that you hate. The chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should examine Paul by scourging, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. And that was a no-no in those days. To arrest a Roman uncharged, that, was, uh, that, 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 that could be the death penalty. Uh, certainly torture or imprisonment to jail and flog a Roman citizen that had not been charged of a crime. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. Paul said, But I was freeborn. Then straightway they departed from him, which should have examined him, and the chief captain also was afraid, after he knew that he was a Roman because he had bound him. And once again, that was, that was a big no-no in that day. Now on the morrow, because he would have known the certainty wherefore he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priests and all their council to appear, and he brought Paul down and set him before them. Now this whole movement isn't quite over yet. Um, the initial riot has happened. Um, uh, Paul has shared some things with him. Um, that the purification process and having his head shaved and all that, you know, that, that outward ritualistic stuff that they do didn't really move them uh, emotionally, physically, spiritually. And uh, Paul's going to follow through with what he believes the Lord wants him to do, is, and that is to preach the word in uh, Jerusalem um, to his people. And didn't turn out so good, but he still was able to accomplish that feat. So anyway, next time we'll pick up the story in chapter 23, and uh, we'll see how it goes for Paul. And um, if you want to read ahead and find out, and we'll all kind of be on the same page next time we study in the book of Acts. So God bless you. Until next time, from the Bears Gym, from Boris and myself, we'll see you.